welcome to Felting with me, Liberty Goodswin. Today this tutorial is going to be about making a sleeping fox just like this on the white felt. Now maybe if you're watching this video you'll have the kit and you can be following exactly what I do. If you have making it with your own um, supplies from home, I've put mine on a white felt base and I've sewn it up with a grey backing. Um, any colour will do. I find the, mo the more wool based felt the better it is. It works better. You'll need some ginger or russet wool, some white, black, a little bit of dark brown, green, red or purple for the fox clubs, and also I add a little yellow flower down there. But it'd be, I'd love to see any pictures of ones that you make. Um, post them to post them up. Send me messages. I'd love to see them. Okay, ready? Let's get underway. Here is your fox and your white felt. You should have a template or on a diagram on your piece of paper just to show you. I'm going to draw it here roughly to show you. Think of your fox as a bit of like an, a circle, slightly egg-shaped, cut into half with the face being a triangle that comes down there to one side. You can visualise that or draw it in pencil or one of these magic markers that disappear over time. That might help you just get the shape of what you're going to be producing. First you'll need your thicker needle, which should be a black needle or red, depending on what, which ones you have, which are a 38 gauge, roughly speaking, a 38 gauge needle and some rough core wool. With the rough core wool we're going to start with where the nose would be, there, and we're going to attach it right down at the tip of the nose. Working our way back with just little gentle prods. Very small gentle prods. I'm not pushing really hard because that would make it go really flat and I don't want that. I'm wanting it to have a bit of shape and form. I'm really just trying to attach it in the shape of the head to my white felt. I'm holding my needle right at the top and going and holding it and pushing it down as straight as I can. If I hold it there, it's very likely that the needle will bend and break. So try as much to hold it at the top. And to curve my wool round. Following the line of the body, the back of the fox as it comes round. But not joining up with the head. Pull off my excess and put it into the, into the side. I can fold this over. it down. Again, I'm not trying to get it all flat. That's not the aim. I'm using this as bulk. This is a nice big hill because it's where the leg is. The back slightly flatter, but I am going to build up that head a bit more. So for that I shall tear some off, fold it in at the sides, and attach from the nose again. building it up so that the top of the head is much higher. So the nose is sloping upwards. And 
I've slightly shaped my head as well. I shall lift that up to see if you can sh see that shape. I'm going to work with a slightly smaller needle now just to give it a bit of shape where I want it. Make sure my nose isn't touching my leg. Now I'm going to take my white. This is natural white merino. It's a lovely soft wool. I'm pulling it apart like this from the ends. If you pull it from the middle, it tends to all come apart and you get end up with a, a knot which is hard to use ultimately. So always try and part your wools by tugging from the top. Forgive me if you've watched my other videos and I'm repeating myself, <laughs> because I do. With the end of the white wool, you're going to fix it right to the end where you began, right to the tip of his nose. In it goes. And then pull it back and up cover as much as you can again with gentle pods I'm now going to a red needle or blue needle so you're looking for a thinner 38 so a regular triangular 38 or a 40 If you're wondering what I'm talking about with these gauges of these needles, either come and talk to me, message me, and I will explain it to you. There are all sorts of different needles. Um, crown, triangular, and star. And they just seem to be better for the different phases whether it being felting into felt like this, or felting a sculpture. The higher the number of gauges, the, the narrower the needle, bizarrely. So a 40 is narrower than a 38. Well, can you see I've now covered that up with, with white. I'm going to stop there. I don't need to cover any more with white. Snip. Snip. Now I'm going to take some of my russet wool. Now if you have the kit, you will have this very same colour and this very same textured wool. This is Corridale. It's slightly rougher more curly and has a sort of like more bulkier feel to it. Makes it easier to do covering when you're needle felting, um, but you don't get the smooth effect. But with On The Fox, we don't necessarily need it smooth. It's more natural almost not to be. So I want a narrow piece. I'm gonna twist it a bit at the end here so I don't have too many loose bits coming off. And we're going to be attaching the nose again See, they have this stripe. Work our way up. When you've gone a little way, it needs to start getting thicker. And curl around. And the same on the other side. I've put my fingernail there and I'm working round that and it gives me the curve without pricking my finger, which is quite handy. There we are. Another tip that I've learned over time is to rest your wrist while you're felting. If you're going like that, you're much more likely to be doing big heavy prods and also it tires you out. Whereas this, you rest your wrist, it's so much easier to do small control prods. I'm getting 
curve it around at the top, making sure you go right to the top and cover all that bulky wool that you've put on at the beginning. I'm going back to my black needle. By all means experiment with needles to see which ones work for you. Round, we're going to be covering the whole body. You can still st still be shaping your fox as you bring it round. If there's a bit of the bulk white that you you don't like the shape of, you can lift it off or nudge it in. Um, wool is very forgiving. like watercolour once you've done it you've really done it and there's no going back there we are can you see round it goes and I'm going to shape the leg a bit so I'm going to make the back lower by prodding over it a few more times and gradually working up to the leg Now this point here, it's very important that we get a nice clear line and the fox, the narrowness is the fox's nose. Before we go any further, we're going to add the eyes because that's always the lovely bit. Take some black. And as you can see, the eyes are asleep, but they're quite fine. To help us get a smooth line, we're going to twist. Like that. Taking your smaller needle. Fix it at one end first. and they curve up and over. Making sure you've firm, firmly attached it at either end. And then a little snip and you're done. it again because I've tugged it. My scissors are obviously not as sharp as they should be. Now for the nose. You can do it in black if you've just got black, but I quite like using a dark brown. This time we're going to roll it into a ball. So, a little bit of rolling there. Again, if I want to get a clean edge, I'm just using the back of my fingernail to get right into where I want to go. I'm 
going to go over the white but I feel as though he's, a, he's not quite narrow enough. Foxes do have a very narrow nose. So I'm just taking it in there a bit. Taking, getting rid of that cheek. It went too far up. I'm going to bring the red down, the russet down there. A little. Now we're going to add the green fox gloves. Again, pull it out from the end. Make sure it's not too thick. Twist and attach above. Trying to make it as centered as possible. And twist again as you're taking it down. That just makes sure you're getting a cleaner line. As you come down, you want to make sure that you're going to leave enough space for your tail. Imagine your tail coming up there, but you want your flower to show. Twist again, so I've seen it getting a bit loose. Again, leaving myself enough space. like so. Now for adding our fox gloves, you can just use a purple or if you wish blend a little red with it. So again pulling from the end and I'm going to pull some purples. And I'm going to pull apart, lay on top. Pull apart, lay on top. Try not to fold over when you're blending. Again, it becomes knotted and difficult to use. Always pull from the top and lay on top. Two tops, that's it. Round we go. I think that's okay. They're almost like... Um, raindrops, that sort of pear shape. So I roll it first, so I've got them all roughly the same size. I find when, when blending wool, you sometimes end up with more that are ready and more that are a little bit more purple, and some that are perfectly, perfectly mixed. And that just seems more natural to have that variation of colour as opposed to them all being the same, exactly the same colour, which is why I like to do it. 
So at the top we're going to have one pointing up. So fix the top, the narrow bit first, working down to make it think, think of a triangle, a rounded triangle. That's right. Okay. Concentrating more on the outside edges than you are on the middle. Because once you've firmed the outside edges in place, it's secure. If you go over, keep going over all over your flower, you'll find you're just making it flat and you're losing some of the, the delight which is the wool and the needle felting to make it re in relief like that. Um, Some of those are a bit big, so I'm going to shrink them down. At this point it's really up to you how far you take the flowers down. I think for me about there is going to be where I shall stop today. Now what you can do, you can either use green green wool at this point to do your leaves or if you've got a bit of green felt you can cut two leaf shapes like that but I'm not going to attach those until we've done our tail so for our tail we need our ginger wool again to lay small pieces like that right next to each other. So you've got the ends top and bottom, like that. Lay it in place starting from at the back of the leg, curve it round and where you want to be prodding isn't on your green and it isn't on your fox you're almost going to be prodding in a line see where that white is there so 
off we go. We're going to prod down there with our thicker needle, the thicker needle that you have, which probably, uh, if you have one of my kits, it will be black. Otherwise, the red one, not the blue. The blue is the finer one. So can you see? That's it. Pushing it all the way in and round. And foxes have a lovely, um, I don't know what you'd call it. Wouldn't be a quiff, would it, at the end of a tail? Tuft. Maybe tuft is the word I'm looking for. Lovely white tuft at the end. So right at the end, we're going to add the white. See, I pulled it out and I'm going to fix it from the middle. So the ends are loose. So my tuft is there. And this is where you just have to give them a little haircut. Their tails are quite bushy. Now give it a bit of a shape. Trim it as much as you like. Just so the nose shows. Fluff it up a bit there. Tuck it in so you see just glimpses of green. And now you can attach your leaves. Or felt your leaves, but as you wish, you can needle felt them with your wool. I can attach that with a bit of um, something I've got here. You can use white or the green. I'm going to use a bit of yellow just because I've got it here today. See, I twisted it and I'm pushing it down, down the centre of the leaf like a vein. And that will hold it in place. Just like magic. If you have a little bit of felt, it can be red or whatever colour you wish. I've chosen yellow. I think it brightens it up underneath. And I'm just cutting little petal shapes out. A rough circle. Going around. Can you see? Very simple shape there. Pop it in the middle. Taking a little bit of white and a little bit of my red. Blend them slightly. Roll them into a ball and pop it in the middle. And just fix it in there. Try to get a nice, neat, tight ball right in the middle if you can. It's hard to show quite as I'm doing it, but because I just roughly blended it, you get the, the two tones of the white and the red. But you can never predict how they will come out, so it'll be different every time which of course is what makes it all oh, you so unique. So now he's missing his ears. I use brown felt for this. If you have some russet colored, that's, that's very good too. If you don't and you only have the white, there is a way around it. You can get your a russet coloured wool or your ginger and you can actually go over it. So if you had say you cut out your ear shape like that 
making sure it's quite wide at the bottom. If you don't have the right coloured wool for the ears, just apply your russet wool over that and that will also be very effective. And if you're worried about it showing both sides, you can fold it over with your needle, just fold it over and tuck it in the back. Fold over, tuck it in the back. Fold over, tuck it in the back. Can you see? And that will actually make a very pretty ear and that edge actually gives some definition. But today I'm going to be using some brown felt. So I want to cut that nice V shape with another nice broad base. I want them the same size, so I'm going to put one over the other to make sure I cut them the same size. There we are. And I'm going to add some of this ginger so they look a bit tufty. Let's bring it into place there. Can you see better? I'm going to push that on top. Leaving some loose ones underneath because we'll use those to attach them. And again there. And down the middle of them, I'm going to add a little bit of white. I quite like them being tufty like that, so I just trim it as opposed to tucking the wool round at this stage, just so there. Not too long. Oops, got my other ear there now. So now to fix them, we want them slightly curved like that. working right down on his eyebrow. Push it in. The middle. So I've attached only half and then I'm going to bring that other one in and over and that will automatically curve the ear round. One and the other one. Go halfway, have a look. If you're not happy, you can always rip it off again at this stage before it's too firm. Yes, I'm happy with that. Attach it a little bit from the back, a little bit from the front. If you feel your ear isn't solid enough and you're worried about it falling off, take a little bit and apply it to the back. Just very gently in at the base there and that will just make it much more solid. There we are. So there we have our little fox who is fast asleep. The next stage is to take some wool, um, some felt, cut it to shape, fill it with a little bit of filler from cushion filler or some um, lavender, which can make it beautiful. 
put it back to back and stitch round. With my one I've used a sewing machine but you can also use uh, thick wool in a blanket stitch which looks really pretty or any normal stitching that you, you feel comfortable using. Attach a little ribbon, a bow or a button if you wish and it makes a beautiful gift or if you don't want to add the ribbon it can be kept in a drawer and just scent the drawer and it's just lovely because it's though the fox is asleep nestled in your drawer. I do hope you enjoyed making your fox. To find out more visit sweetlibertybell.com or message me at sweetlibertybell.com or here under this video. Have fun felting! Bye for now.